and the guitar, yeah, piano, sewing machine, bookcase, Reverend George Benard wrote Dole, Reverend George Cross, wow, Reverend George Benard wrote 350 hymns, wow. And that's a long story on how it got there. If you'd like to hear it, I can tell you. Yes. <laughs> a man by the name of Oliver Rodenhaver heard that, heard that there was a song being sung up in Pokagon. Hmm. It's down in the far wow. southwest corner of the state. Hmm. He went and heard it. He liked the song. Wow. Well, Oliver Rodenhaver was the business manager. <laughs> For a very notable person. Moody. That person was Billy Sunday. Ah, Billy Sunday. Oh, okay. the Hill program. Oh wow. oh, wow. They, through some negotiations, they got to use the song. Some history of songs. That was played before the program came on the air and when it closed. Yes. <laughs> that went nationwide. Billy Sunday had that big of a, a popularity mm. that people listened. And so that's uh, the only, it would have been just about like any other folk song <coughs> that would have stayed local had it not been for that. Exactly. The last song that Reverend George wrote was There's a Light on the Cross. He wrote that in 1949 and he had retired. Mm -hmm. Do you have a copy of that? Can, uh, can, can we I sing that one? I don't even know. The, I don't even know. Oh, that. man. We've got one copy, but that's it. Oh. I don't even know. That. I can imagine oh, it was a day like it, was, it could have been a cloudy day <laughs> in the evening. He was sitting on his front porch and he saw the cross that had been established in the front yard by the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> And he, it really struck him. He's being carried. I can hear him now. Hannah, dear, that was his wife, come here. Well, George, what do you want? Mm. Look, there's a light on the cross. <coughs> it may have been the sun coming through the clouds, and it, 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 as the sun sets in the west, and it, he was looking to the east. Uh, and there it was, highlighted. So he wrote by inspiration. Wow. He wrote one song that could be written by about any songwriter today. Ooh, what song is it? And it's titled, God Bless Our Boys. Wow. On land, on sea, and in the air, God bless our boys tonight. God save and keep and protect their lives, as in this war they fight. God bless the homes in which they came, and may their loved ones dear be sheltered by the Father's hand, and in his word find cheer. Could any reputable songwriter write that same words today? Absolutely. With everything that's going on in the world that we really don't have individual control of, <laughs> but nevertheless, they're happening. Uh, when he had done his Hannah, there's a light on the cross. A second wife. Probably yeah, within two wife. days, he had written a three verse song. It was his nature. What's a guitar? Reverend George. Uh, wow was born in 1873 in Youngstown, Ohio. Mm -hmm. There is a cross established there uh, in that, to commemorate that. Uh, he had lost his father when he was about 14 and his mother had remarried and uh, his father had worked in the coal mines and was in an accident. His mother remarried a coal miner from Iowa. Well, Iowa has coal mines the same as Southern Illinois. Well, he liked the boys that he started hanging around with. They invited him to what he thought was a stage play, which turned out to be a on the house, 
on a stage in an auditorium, a revival meeting of the Salvation Army. Well, there was a little bit of music there. He liked music. He played the guitar. His buddies all played music. So he struck up a, a good relationship that lasted for 22 years. He joined the Salvation Army. He really liked the, cell, the, cell, the uh, street corner ministries, I'll call them, the revival type meetings. But in, in all of his meetings and, and his travels around, the cross had always kept something in the back of his mind. It would always come up and, and he'd think about it. Well, he finally wound up writing the song. <coughs> So it, there's an, an, another cross is established in, in, in Sturgeon Bay. Well, he was a minister because what, what the Salvation Army wasn't furnishing for him, I think he went to a, a seminary. He wanted to learn more, more about uh, the subjects of uh, religion and he, he learned that uh, yeah. he learned his lessons well. He became ordained. Back then he was an Episcopal Methodist minister. Well, it's kind of strange to have two prominent names uh, uh, and associated together. But through philosophical differences, why now today they're, they're, they're separate, but they're still active. 